Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the public hearing that is being held via Zoom teleconference. If you notice on the screen, there is an agenda that is posted. My name is Michelle Cook, and I am the legislative manager within the Office of Legislative Services for the Legislative Branch. <clears throat> Number one, welcome introductions. Two, the purpose of the public hearing. Three, presentation on Navajo Nation School Board Apportionment Plan. Resolution number HEHSCAP-05-20. Four, public hearing guidelines. Five, open to the public for comments, recommendations regarding the Navajo Nation School Board Apportionment Plan. Please note there's no derogatory comments as all comments are considered public record. Please state your name and organizations represented it if applicable for the record and state your reason or comment. Six, close of public hearing. <clears throat> I like to make a note to have everyone please mute your phones if you are not speaking. This is just to ensure that there's no background noise when we do hear the individuals that are making a comment. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. As I have already introduced myself, I will go ahead and turn the floor over to Mr. Matthew So. Mr. So. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Matthew So. Share Matthew So. Touching. Share Tava Hebas Chain. Kelechini Dashanala. Shin Dashache. Serek Ande Dashgando. Serek Ande. Yes, and Asha. And I'm here to assist and help with the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. So. So we'll go on to the next item on the agenda, which is the purpose of the public hearing. The purpose of this hearing is, or hearings, is primarily for the purposes of getting input and comments on pay, plan six. The court has approved the plan, but is requiring more input and comments from the public. Plan six summarized. Plan six has five agencies listed. Central, Eastern, Fort Defiance, Northern, and Western. The plan shows the list of schools in each of the agencies on the left-hand column. On the right-hand column, all of the chapters represented it are listed. Most school boards represent more than one chapter, except the schools in the satellite community, excuse me, except the schools in the satellite chapters. There are single and at-large positions in each agency. Central agency. There will be two school boards, each representing more than one school, each board consisting of five members. There will be a total of 10 school board, school board members in the agency. Eastern agency. There will be six school boards, three representing more than one school and more than one chapter. The other three will be the schools in the satellite communities, each with their own school board, chapter-based. Each board will consist of five members with a total of 30 school board members in the agency. For defiance, there will be two school boards, each representing more than one school and more than one chapter. Each board will consist of five members, totaling 10 members in the agency. D <clears throat> the Northern Agency, there will be three school boards, two representing more than one school, each with five members. Navajo Prep will have its own school board with four members at large by agency. Each of the three school boards will represent more than one chapter all positions are at large, except Shiprock chapter will have two members. There will be a total of 14 school board members in the Northern Agency. Western Agency. There will be three school boards, two representing more than one school, each with five members. Richfield Residential Hall will have its own board with, five, with four members. All positions in agency will be elected at large from assigned chapters. 
What is a school board apportionment plan? A school board apportionment plan determines the number of positions on a school board. The plan takes into account the number of school children and chapters to be represented. Here are two provisions from the election code regarding this. The apportionment plan shall be based at a minimum <coughs> on the number of students attending from one or more chapters. Each local community school board shall provide to the Health, Education, and Human Services Committee and the Division of Diné Education current and accurate information regarding the number of students attending the local community school for use in development of the apportionment plan by October 2003 and every four years thereafter. This is according to Navajo Nation Code 11 NNC subsection <coughs> 11D. The Health, Education, and Human Services Committee shall apportion the number of school board seats among the chapter or chapters represented in each local community school board. This apportionment shall establish election precincts for each local community school board containing approximately equal number of students attending the local community school at the time of the apportionment. This is according to Navajo Nation Code 11 NNC subsection 11B, cited in part. What types of schools are covered under apportionment plans for schools under the election code? Generally, those funded or operated by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Bureau of Indian Education, here's what the election code says. Local community school board. Members of a local community school board who are elected pursuant to the Navajo Nation election code. Local community school board members include those members elected to the governing boards of schools operated or funded by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, BIE, for the education of Navajo children within the Navajo Nation. By the Bureau of Indian Affairs, BIE. Excuse me, please mute your phones. As I was saying, but does not include members of the school boards for private, parochial, and state public school. This is according to Navajo Nation 11 NNC subsection 1X. When and how often is the school board apportionment plan adopted? The election code requires that school board apportionment plans be adopted every four years. Here is the law from the election code. On or before the first Monday of November 2003 and every four years thereafter, the Health, Education, and Human Services Committee of the Navajo Nation Council shall set the size of each local community school board and shall apportion the number of school board seats among the chapter or chapters represented in each local community school board. This apportionment shall establish election precincts for each local community school boards containing approximately equal numbers of schools attending the local community school at the time of apportionment. This is according to Navajo Nation Code 11 NNC subsection 11B, cited in part. What does consultation mean for plans of developing and adopting a school board apportionment plan? In the development of a school board apportionment plan, there is a requirement of consultation Essentially, the election code defines consultation as such. Consultation means notice of the proposed school board apportionment plan and an opportunity to comment on the proposed apportionment plan. The consultation is 60 days. During this time, public input is provided for as well as hearings and opportunities to submit written comments. Public input. There must be opportunity for input provided to the Navajo Board of Election Supervisors, parents, local school boards, chapters, school board organizations, such as the agency school boards and the Navajo Division of the Net Education. This input can either be in writing or through oral testimony. Hearings. Although hearings are not required, the Health Education and Human Services Committee can hold hearings at the schools, chapters, communities, or agencies affected by the proposed reapportionment plan. If hearings are held, 
there can be reasonable restrictions imposed at these hearings, such as length for time for testimony. This is according to Navajo Nation Code 11 NNC subsection 1H. Written comments. Written comments can be provided by those that are interested in submitting them. How many members can make up the school board? Three to seven members. Here's what the election code says. A local community school board shall consist of not less than three nor more than seven members based upon the current adopted apportionment plan. This is according to Navajo Nation Code 11 NNC subsection 11A. Who must approve a school board apportionment plan? Under the Navajo Nation Election Code, the Health, Education, and Human Services Committee of the Navajo Nation Council approves the final school board apportionment plan. This is according to Navajo Nation Code 11 NNC subsection 11B. What happens after Health, Education, and Human Services Committee approves and adopts a school board apportionment plan? It is then submitted to the Navajo Board of Education Supervisors for use in these elections. In regards to the consultation for public input, that is why we are hosting the meetings for in-person and also having these Zoom meetings scheduled from one o'clock to three o'clock. If you like to submit it in writing, please submit your written comments to the Health, Education and Human Services Committee, Attention School Board Apportionment, PO Box 670, Winter Rock, Arizona 86515. Your comments can also be faxed to 928-871-7474. And an email is also available, schoolboard at navajo-nsn.gov. Going back to the agenda, I will turn the floor over to Mr. Matthew So regarding the presentation on the Navajo Nation School Board Apportionment Plan. Mr. So? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the, their, this is the Health, Education, Human Services Committee of, of Plan 6 that was approved. And the resolution number that's associated is HEHSC uh, AP-05-20. And the attachment that's been provided in, and displayed is called Plan 6. Uh, Plan 6 was adopted by the Health, Education, Human Services Committee on April 15th of 2020. And again, for the purposes of, of this hearing, uh, we're, we're, the, the purpose is to try to collect additional input and comment regarding Plan 6. The, the first agency that's listed is called Central Navajo Agency. Uh, the first school board that is listed is called Central Navajo Schools K-12, and it is a five-member board. The following schools are listed under Central Navajo School. Rocky Ridge Boarding School, Cottonwood Day School, Many Farms High School. It is a five-member school board with the following school board seats. One school board member representing Chinle Chapter, two school board members representing Many Farms Chapter, and one at-large school board member representing Round Rock uh, and Rough Rock Chapters. The last seat in that school board is an at-large school board seat representing Touchy, Blue Gap, Whipperill, Tethlani Cottonwood Chapters. The next school board that is listed is called Chin Chinle Navajo Schools K-12. It is a five-member school board with the following schools, Black Mesa Community School, Rough Rock Community School, Nas Laney Community School, the Gachuga Community School, Pinyon Community School, and Many Farms Community School. It's a five member school board with the following school board seats. One at large with the Kachuga, Tsele, Wheatfields, Round Rock chapters. One at large position representing Tset Chisha, Many Farms chapters. The next seat is a board member representing Chin Lee chapter. The next is a school board seat at large representing Hard Rock, Pinyon, Forest Lake, and Black Mesa chapters. And the last school board seat in this school board is an at-large position representing Whipperill, Touchy, Blue Gap, Noslini, Tsethlani, Cottonwood chapters. The total number of school boards for this agency is 10. The next agency that is listed is Eastern Navajo Agency. Uh, the first school that is listed is, listed is called Shushpitwell Schools K-12. 
It is a five member school board with the following schools Bread Springs Day School, Chichicha Jones Ranch Community School, and Wingate K 12 Schools. It is a five member school board with, with the following school board seats one at large board position representing Chichicha, Bahala, Tetlichi, Manilito, and Seattle chapters. The next is a school board position representing Church Rock chapter. The next is a school board position representing Ayambato chapter. The next is an at-large board, board member representing Pinedale and Mariana Lake chapters. And the last school board position is an at-large seat representing Thiru, Bakapriwit, Smith Lake chapters. The next school board is, that, that is listed is called Tisoza Crown Point Schools. It is a five member school board with the following schools. Baka Gwoi Yaja Community School, Lake Valley Navajo School, Tse Ahe Community School, Mariana Lake Community School, Debe Yaja Habitino Brega Pass School, Ojo Encino Day School, Pueblo Pintado Community School, East Oza Beltra Community School. It's a five member school board with the following school board seats. One board member representing Baka Prewood Chapter. One at large board member representing Pinedale, Mariana Lake, Smith Lake, and Thoreau Chapters. The next is an at-large board member representing Tse'ahe, Nahodishgiz, Lake Valley, White Rock, and Cran Point Chapters. The next school board position is an at-large position representing Hi. Counselor Ojo Encino, Pueblo Pintado Chapters. And the last school board position is an at-large seat representing Vicente, Little Water, Casimiro Lake, and White Horse Chapters. The next school board that is listed is called Eastern Navajo Schools. It is a five member school board with the following schools under it. Not Lejun Jiltka, Ortorion Day School, Tethnao Dithi Community School, and Hanat Gle Community School Dormitory. It's a five member board with the following school board seats. Two school board members representing Torion Chapter, two school board members representing Huerfano Chapter, and one board member representing Naizi Chapter. The next school board that is listed is Alamo Navajo School Board. It is a five member school board with all five school board members representing Alamo chapter. The fifth school board that is listed is Raymond Navajo School Board or Pine Hill School. It is a five member school board with all five school board members coming out of Raymond Navajo chapter. And the sixth school board that is listed for Eastern Agency is Tohajala Community School. It is a five member school board with all five school board members coming out of Tohajala chapter. The total number of school board members for Eastern Agency is 30. The next agency is Fort Defiance Agency. Uh, the first school board that is listed is called Tsehotoy Fort Se Toy One Fort Defiance Schools, and it is a five-member school board with the following school board uh, following schools: Pine Hill Spring, uh, Pine, Pine Springs Day School, Seba Delkai Boarding School, Jetaza Elementary School, and Crystal Boarding School. It's a five-member school board with the following school board seats: one board member at large representing Red Lake Crystal Chapters. One board member representing Whipperall Chapter. One school board member representing Low Mountain Chapter. One school board member representing Tisto Chapter. And the last at large uh, board member representing Lup, Lupton, Hawk, and Nahat Adzil Chapters. And the next school board seat is called Tseho Toe to Fort Defiant Schools. The following schools are under that school board Hunters Point Boarding School, Wide Ruins Community School, Kin Dathachi Wachka. Dilkon Community School, Greasewood Springs Community School, Chushka Community School, Tisha Ken Residential Hall, and Winslow Resid Residential Hall. It is a five member school board with the following school board seats. One at large board member representing Nash Chitty, Tohachi, Coyote Canyon, Bajas Club, and Mexican Springs chapters. The next is an at large board member representing Fort Defiance, St. Michael's chapter. The next is an at-large board member representing Oak Springs, Hawk, Lupton, okay, Not yeah, Hutsu, yeah, yeah, and White Ruins chapters. The next position is an at-large board member representing Steamboat, Kindathichi or Kintachi, Ganado, Clagato, Cornfields, and White Ruins chapters. And the last school board position is an at-large member representing oh, Greece, oh, 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 Whitebone, Yilcon, Jetco, and Tisto's chapters. The total number of school boards oh, for the agency and This is too much information. So, so the next school board yeah, next agency is Northern yeah, Navajo Agency. Um, the first school board that is listed is called Northern Navajo School. It is a five-member school board yeah. following schools. 
Cove Day School, Sonosti Day School, the Clavado Day School, Toha Le Community School, Aneth Community School, Tisnas Bas Community School, Ninahanzad Community School, and Red Rock Day School. It is a five member school board with, with the following school board seats. One at-large board member representing Anna, Red Mesa, Tortecan, and Mexican Water Chapters. The next, is, next school board member is an at-large seat representing Tisnas Pas, the Clavado, Gadiaja Tocon, and Teracan Chapters. The next is an at-large board member representing Cove and Red Valley Chapters. The next school board seat is an at-large board member representing Sinasti, Tioga Hills, Toadlina, and Newcomb Chapters. And the last school board seat is an at-large position uh, representing Shiprock, Ninahanzad, Upper Fruitland, and San Juan chapters. The next school board that is listed is called Natanina Schools K-12. It is a five-member school board with the following school, schools under it. Shiprock Associated Schools, Kintia Residential Campus, and San Tzadis Ahed Dinebo Otra, or Rock Point Community School. It is a five-member school board school board with the, with the following school board seats. Two school board members representing Shiprock chapter. One at-large school board member representing Rock Point and Round Rock chapters. The next is an at-large board member representing Gadiaje, Tocoen, and Serapan chapters. And the last seat is an at-large board member representing Sinasti, Tugger Hills, Toadlina, and Newcomb chapters. And the last school board that is listed is Navo Preparatory School. It is a four member school board with the following school board seats. One at large representing Northern Navajo Agency. One at large with Eastern Navajo Agency. One at large with Fort Defiant A Agency. And the last position is an at large board member representing Chinle Navajo Agency and Western Navajo Agency. The total number of school board members in, no in this plan is 14. And the last agency is Western Navajo Agency. <clears throat> Uh, the first school board is called Tonanas Diza Tuba City Schools 1 K-12. It is a five-member school board with the following schools under it. Denahoto Boarding School, Tonalia Day School, Kaibito Boarding School, Kayenta Community School, and Tuba City Boarding School. It is a five-member school board with the following school board seats. Two school board members at large representing Tonalia Tonanas Diza chapters. One board member at large representing Tsabikin and Kaibito chapters. The next is an at-large board member representing Bottaway Gap, Coal Mine Canyon, and Cameron chapters. And the last seat is an at-large position uh, representing Cayenta, Oljeto, Denahoso, and Chichimbido chapters. The next school board that is listed is called Tonanas Desert, Tobit City Schools 2, K-12. It is a five-member school board with, with the following schools. Little Singer Community School, Nazis On Community School, Chief Chimbido Community School, Kentlana Border Town Dormitory, Loop Schools Incorporated, Gray Hills Academy High School, and Shanto Preparatory School. It is a five member school board with the, with the following school board seats. Two school, two, two, two school board members are at large representing Tonalia and Tonalia's Desert chapters. The next is an at large board member representing Tsapikin, Epito, and Shanto chapters. The next school board seat is one at large representing Cayenta, Oljeto, Denhoto, Chilchimbido, and Natis An chapters. And the last school board seat is an at-large board member representing Loop, City Tua, uh, Bird Spring, and Lonnie Lake chapters. The last school board that is listed is, is, res, is Richfield Residential Hall. It is, it is a four-member board with the following school board seats. One at-large with Tua Nanas Tuk City, Bottaway Gap chapters. One board member at large representing Den Ozo Kenza chapters. The third seat is an at large board member representing Ojeto. The last school board that is listed is an at large board position representing Tlchi, Kaipito, Nazis On, and Shanto chapters. The total number of school board members in this apportionment plan is 14 for Western Naval Agency. And that concludes the presentation on the plan six apportionment, the school board apportionment plan. Thank you, Mr. So. Going back to the agenda. 
We are now on number four, the public hearing guidelines. Please mute your phones to deter the background noise. I will also go ahead and open to, or excuse me, number five, open to public comments and recommendations. Please state your name, your organization that you're representing for the record. State your reason, your comment, or your recommendation. No derogatory comments as all comments are considered public record. You will have five minutes to state the comment. So if you will, I will open it up to the public right now. Is there anyone who would like to state a reason or provide a comment or a recommendation at this time? Good afternoon, this is Maxine Cole from the Raymond Alpha School Board. Good afternoon, Maxine. You have five minutes. Okay, um, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the public hearing that you're, um, that HESI and the Navajo Nation is um, providing to the public. <coughs> um, I think plan six was discussed. I oppose and do not approve of plan six. I believe that as a Raymond Alpha school board and for other, for the other school, their community controlled school, we know our vision of the schools where, which are governed by our own community members that are operated by our, by our own community members. And we teach our students, our own community members. So, and we receive the BIE funding from BIA. And for that reason, I, um, I would like for Hesse and the Navajo Nation to please respect the rights of the voters and the citizens of the Navajo Nation and know that they have wants and needs and rights. And so for that, I oppose plan six. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine. Is there anyone else who would like to state a reason or a comment or a recommendation at this time? Is there anyone who would like to provide a comment or recommendation or state a reason at this time? Is there anyone that would like to provide a comment or recommendation or state a reason at this time? Hello, this is David Gomez. Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Gomez. Yes, we can. You have okay. five minutes, sir. Okay, I don't have a recommendation or a, a comment, but I, I do have a, a question about what the legal basis is for consolidation of the school boards into regional into regional into regional school boards. Do we have anyone from Office of Legislative Council on the line who might be able to answer that question?
Is there anyone from Office of Legislative Council that will be able to assist us? Good afternoon. I'm sorry, Mr. Gomez. At this time, it does not seem like there is any individuals from Office of Legislative Council, but I will. I did take that note and I will go ahead and forward that question to Office of Legislative Council. Okay. Also, I have a question regarding the votes that were cast. Uh, the court in its uh, decision, most recent decision in the Chavez case said that voters would be allowed to withdraw their votes once they see what the plans are. And uh, I'd like to know what the legal basis is for permitting people to withdraw their votes once they've been cast. Okay, sir, I have noted that question as well. Mm -hmm. Um, another question I have is how this Plan 6 um, allocates seats for local community school boards uh, based on enrollment figures as required by 11 NNC 11, um, which doesn't mention anything at all about uh, consolidated or regional boards. It refers to uh, allocation of numbers for local community school boards. So uh, uh, we'd also like to find out how, uh, how this um, plan meets with, uh, with that requirement of section uh, of uh, 11 NNC section 11. Did you catch Okay, that? Mr. Gomez, yes, I did note those okay. questions that you did have. Okay. And I will go, I did request for assistance from Office of Legislative Council. Okay. I'm not sure if Mr. So, Matthew So, has any kind of information he might be able to share with you. Uh, I'm also wondering if Doty is willing to release its calculations on apportionment uh, based upon the enrollment numbers for each school. Also, whether these were based on uh, on uh, 2020 enrollment numbers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gomez, from what I recall, the, the court had is addressed the issue of consolidation when it did make its ruling. Mm -hmm. and, and the general process uh, as was identified was that the, sco the schools were identified using what the apportionment law does require, which is the student enrollment chapter affiliation, and the numbers are tallied up accordingly. And the numbers all were derived out of the NASIS system, which is all provided at the school level by, by all, all the schools. So the information that was collected and provided for was collected direct from the schools through, a, through NASIS. Mm -hmm. And that identified the chapter affiliation. So the only two criteria that were used, as I recall in the calculation of the plan, was data that, that was derived from the portion plan or, or derived from NASIS. Release your formula to show how these enrolled numbers were used to uh, uh, calculate the apportionment of seats for local school boards. Uh, I, 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 I have. I think we'd have to go back, but possibly. I, I don't know. I have, I have to probably get permission on that. But okay. I, I, the issue I really can't answer it right now. Okay. And also, how uh, the leap was made from apportionment for local school boards uh, to uh, creation of regional school boards. Yeah. I, I really can't answer that question, but all I can say is that as far as like the instructions on the portion plan, the, the, the different options were provided to the committee. You had plan one, plan two, plan three, uh, plan four, a four B, five, a five C, and plan six, which 
I identified a, a multiple multiplicity uh, of different options regarding school board configurations. Mm -hmm. And out of those options, the, the, the committee narrowed the decision down to plan 4A and plan 6. Okay, but how is the math done to go from, uh, uh, to do what the statute requires, which is to apportion seats for local school boards? And then how was the math done to uh, apportion seats for newly created regional school boards? As identified in the apportionment plan, there was a, name, a school board name that was given, a list of schools, and the school board names were aligned. And based on that, the chapter affiliations were identified. So it uses what the law has required, which is the, chap the student enrollment tallied up, chap chapter affiliation, and you get, you, get a, you get numbers based on that. Mm -hmm. uh, for local school boards, correct? Yes. And then uh, how were these uh, local school board figures converted into uh, the regional school boards? I think I just explained that answer already. Mm, I don't think you did, because, uh, as you know, we're talking about two different things here. We're talking about something that the statute requires, which is uh, apportionment for local school boards. But what we're actually talking about today is the is uh, is a public comment on regional school boards. So what what is the formula that was followed to create regional school boards and making sure that enrollments were were properly apportioned across that? Uh, Mr. Gomez, I'm, I'm not going to get into some of the details because that, that's already been is settled by the court. And I'm not going to get into a legal discussion on stuff like this because uh, I think I know where you're going and I'm not going to go there. Okay, well, I, I think the people are entitled to know this, the people who will be uh, making public comments on, on this. Also, uh, there was uh, some rumors about there being a 60-day consultation period rather than the 52 days ordered by the court. Uh, which is it going to be? As has been expressed by the committee, the, 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 instead of 52, they are intended to go with a full 60. Okay. Um, if plan six is adopted and goes into place, um, regarding the employees of, uh, of the current school boards, who will be their employer then? Uh, will their employer be the regional school boards? Uh, Mr. Gomez, from what I understand, the schools, at, at, as they are, stay intact. The only change is governance. The, the, the policies, the procedures all remain the same. For the school, the contracts, all that remains the same. The only change is who the school board is. So the regional school boards will be looking at and following all the individual personnel policies and contracts for each of the schools within their control. Is that it? As I understand, that the, the, each school has their own individual policy procedure. The only change is regarding the role of the school board. I, I believe the process you're talking about, about dissolving grants or combining, that's, that's, a, that's a whole separate other, other process and that's aside from apportionment. Yeah, go, what, is the, what is going to happen with that? Will, the, the grants be uh, consolidated into the in, to the regional uh, schools, uh, school boards, or will they continue to be, uh, will the individual schools be, be the grantees? Uh, based, on, based on what has already been presented, the intent of, is, is very clear, and that's that schools are to, to retain their own in, in, in individual status as school. The only change is the, the composition of school board overseeing those schools. But each school has their own governing policy procedure. The only change again, as mentioned, is who the school board is. 
Okay. Um, once again, we look forward to seeing what the uh, legal basis is for uh, consolidation. Um, as you know, we're talking about 11 and NC 11. There's no mention of consolidation in that statute. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing what uh, uh, Doty and Heshi have to say about what the legal basis is for consolidation under Plan 6. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Is there anyone from Legislative Council on the call at this time? I'm sorry, Mr. Gomez. Um, it does not look like there's anyone on the call at this time regarding the Legislative Council request. So I have noted your information and perhaps we will have an individual join us later on. Okay, if not, we have a full comment period and we'll be uh, submitting these comments and writing also for consideration by the committee. That is correct, Mr. Gomez. Okay, is there anyone you. else who would I like to, to say, provide comment? I just, want, I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity uh, to raise these questions. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a comment, a recommendation, or state a reason at this time? Hello. Hello. This is uh, Kirby Johnson with Kintill Residential Campus. Hello, Mr. Johnson. You have five minutes, sir. Okay. As I recall, I know prior years before they started doing the reapportionment plan. Angie Barninez with the Bozba and everybody was aware of the plan being submitted every four years. And we were told to forgive my word verbiage, but beat the bushes to get enrollment to help keep the status as the way it is. And I just wanted to clarify that. And it was stated before. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a reason or state a comment or recommendation at this time? Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Um, yes, ma my, ma my name is Vera Morgan. I Hello, am Miss Morgan. You have five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I'm the uh, school board president at Wingate Elementary and Wingate High School. And with the with uh, I just do like to do a comment in reference to the Plan Six uh, apportionment plan for the school board. Um, I really don't see a reason why we have to do this apportionment plan. It is not going to change the attendance for our children that are attending school. It's not going to change the testing or assessment results for our children that are attending the school. However, it may make some difference maybe with the finances, but each school has their own budget. Each school gets their money according to the student count during the count week. How is that gonna be better if we make and choose the plan or if you, whoever is choosing, HESI committee choosing plan six for us? What happened to the freedom of speech for the individual of the United States or us as voting members? I'm speaking for Wingate High School, Wingate Elementary and the parents of each chapter that we represent. 
we go to each chapter and we do reports of what's happening, whether it's through email, telephone, personal, or either at the chapters. And with these schools, they have their own budget, each one of them. And I'm a real stickler of budgets. Uh, I'm always asking questions. Why this amount? Why is this in the negative? Why is this? Why is that? Now, if we put one representative from each um, area of school for Ch Wingate, it's going to be from Chechetla, Mariana Lake, Pinedale, um, Ayambato, Church Rock, that area, and we're going to have five individuals representing. And it's just going to create more chaos. It's not going to make no difference. And in our children's education, we're just going to hurt them. We're going to hurt our parents. There is not going to be a lot of involvement because of this uh, apportionment plan that's being proposed. I'm very against it. I'm not for it because it's the violation of some of our rights as a voting member. And it seems like HESI has been doing that by themselves of making recommendations and legislations and doing their own thing without the people's voice out here at the local level. Yet everything is being approved through the Window Rock, through the legislation, through the um, executive offices without coming back to the local level. We need to keep it the way it is. We need to leave it alone because so far things are going well. Why is it that we need to change? It's not gonna change much. Maybe it'll help the HESI committee with more of um, gear to make more plans to damage the education plan, the educational plan, the educational rights for our students. On the Legis LGA no local governance act. Aya sha Ishe Hajago to Bahwint Ida. On Hide Yahe Ade on Hide Ala Ala Dash Equid Chapter House and the Council Minet on the Kata Hajashi at the Haskri O the Ditchot in which a hada at the Hoyo and Dalwa. A co adin on Hide in the Ho Akude Hajo and that later leave it the way it is. That's what I'll, I'm going to say for Wingate Elementary and Eastern Agency and Wingate High School. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a recommendation or have a comment or state a reason at this time? Do we have anyone from Office of Legislative Council on the call? Uh, yes, there is. Um, this is Ron Haven from the Office of Legislative Council. I, I, I just got on the call just a minute ago. Hello, Mr. Haven. Um, we have a Mr. David Gomez that has several questions in regards to the legal basis of this apportionment plan. Mr. Gomez? Yes. Hello? Hello? Hi. Um, hello, Mr. Haven. It's been a while since I've seen you. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well as well, Mr. Gilmes. Good. Uh, you know, um, as this process is going along, uh, we had some questions about uh, about how this uh, this whole thing came about. Well, one of the questions that some of the grad schools that I represent have is what the legal basis is for a school board regionalization plan when um, regionalization is not included within the, the text of uh, 
11 NNC 11. You know, if you look at 11 and NC 11, and then also the entirety of uh, section uh, of uh, Title 10, it refers to local community school boards, but there's no mention of regional school boards. Um. Uh, is, is that the extent of your question there, Mr. Gomez? Well, that's, that's one of them. That's the primary question that I had. Um, another question I had is uh, uh, regarding the, the court's decision on, uh, on uh, casting votes in, in which the court said that uh, uh, it would permit uh, voters to withdraw their votes after they were cast, once they had a chance to take a look at uh, at uh, Plan Six, and I don't see any provision in Title Eleven that that permits that to people to withdraw their votes once they've been cast. Okay, um, we. Um uh, if, if that's it, let me go ahead and uh, to make an effort to uh, address your concerns here. Um, uh, pursuant to um, uh, the court order, uh, this is under WRC V5520, and I have uh, a copy of that I, I pulled just now. And, and uh, basically... Um, uh, you're asking about provisions under um, Title 11 um, and also uh, the basis of the school board plan. Now, essentially, um, uh, HESI has been uh, uh, conducting uh, uh, these hearings. Uh, hearings are being conducted at, at its direction, and essentially uh, what has occurred in the um, in the past is, is that certainly there has been a, a lawsuit that was filed and essentially what we're doing is that um, uh, the court has determined that we need to go back and, and, and consult, uh, provide uh, some input from the community members um, and, and allow them to provide uh, testimony at, at, at some of these uh, hearings that are going to be uh, conducted, that are, that are in fact being conducted, and also allow uh, a comment period at least 60 days. And, and that's uh, the basis for why uh, these uh, <clears throat> hearings are, are, are taking place. Um, related to that is um, under Navajo Nation uh, code, including um, uh, per, uh, Title II, uh, so there are provisions that allow uh, standing committees uh, certain authority. Uh, some of them per, uh, pertain, like for example, in this case, uh, uh, elections. Um, uh, and, and if you look at Title uh, um, 11, um, under the election code, it does indicate that apportionment plans are conducted every um, uh, four years, um, four years at, at the beginning of um uh, uh, prior to the uh, schools, um, school boards uh, assuming office, uh, there's provisions in the election code that does uh, require the Health Education Human Services Committee uh, to to begin formulating um, a plan, a plan for uh, school boards and uh, some of these positions and, and the criteria. Uh, certainly, it, it is set in the election code. Yes, and, and they have taken uh, the criteria. It,
Hello, please mute your phones. Okay, and, and the other portion here, I believe addresses the uh, uh, court's decision. And I believe that the portion that I have uh, caught is, is and I didn't catch all of it, Mr. Gomez. I do apologize. Uh, you were not coming in too clear. Under the court order, there is reference to to votes um, that have been cast, and, and you ask what authority there is uh, for voters uh, to withdraw their votes. And um, I, I think your point is made that where in the election code does it authorize uh, voters to withdraw their votes? And essentially, I, I don't really, um, I, the only thing, my response here is, is that the court has, in fact, ordered this, and we are going to abide by that uh, order and, and um, allow um, this particular process to take place. Now, this will take place upon um, proceedings that are currently taking place now with respect to the enforcement plan comments, okay? There's going to be another period of time within which uh, that portion will be addressed. Okay, so that's where that um, aspect of this process will take place, and, and essentially we've been ordered to do that by the courts. And and where in the election code does that appear? Um, I, the only thing I can tell you right now is that yeah, we uh, um, there is a lawsuit, and this is all part of the orders that we have been uh, asked to comply with, and we certainly are going to go comply with these orders. So that's the extent, and I do apologize for the uh, extensive uh, response to that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish there, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Mr. Gomez, you can always submit your written comments as we have previously stated. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you. And I appreciate Mr. Haven uh, uh, joining us and offering his expertise on these matters. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a comment or a recommendation or state a reason at this time? Yes, I will. Hello? Yes. Ma'am, um, can you state your yes. name for the record? You have five minutes. Yes, this is Valerie Hasisa, and I am a parent, and I do have two kids that go to a BIE school, and um, I really don't like what the HESI committee is doing about this school board reapportionment plan. From previous, I know we went to public chapter uh, meetings, and there was a lot of parents that spoke their their mind, like what they agreed on that plan 4A. So I thought at that time things were going okay until now I heard about this one again. And I really don't like it. And um, I'm sure a lot of parents will not like all the changes that are gonna be made. And a parent as myself, I'm not gonna be driving so far to attend a board meeting and all the pairs are not able to drive. Some of them don't even have vehicles. So there are a lot of issues that will probably happen and look at some uh, of our head starts. They're not in full, um, they're not providing services. So I think that I, oppose this plan six and leave everything the way it is in our community. Our school is running better. It's like really good. Um, my kids have been in the FACE program. Now my oldest is in seventh grade and they're academic wise, they are really doing awesome. And I like the way our school is. So leave everything 
the way it is and not mess with our schools. Focus on something else besides our schools. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a comment or a recommendation at this time? Is there anyone else who'd like to provide a recommendation or state a reason or a comment at this time? Hello, this is Jordan at City from Tohajali. Hello, Mr. At City. You have five minutes, sir. I'm um, really quick, just, just FYI, you muted everyone. So those of you who are trying to speak, you would have to press star six to unmute. Um, I, I just pressed star six. Um, so as a registered voter of the Tawajula community, I wanted to express my opposition in selecting this plan six school board reapportionment plan. Uh, the school board reapportionment plan is not in accordance with the election code, NAVO um, Title 10, um, which is what this really is. It's, a, it's an election issue, not an educational issue. So if you notice in the provisions that you had presented, it comes from Title 11. So to elaborate on my comment and how it's not a, in accordance with Title 11, you have 67 schools on Navajo Nation. The election code states that there has to be a minimum of three school board members for each school with a max of seven. This means there should be at least 201 school board members or a max of 335. Another violation in this apportionment plan says that each chapter will be represented. The at-large positions take, takes away this representation. If you look at the plan for Eastern Agency, one at large representative is for Theroux, Baca, and Smith Lake. When Theroux wins because of its size, you don't have representation at Baca or Smith Lake. And the other school board um, group will be th between Theroux and Gallup. When one of them wins, there's gonna, you're going to lose representation for 17 of the other chapters. So there's really no fairness. Um, and, and as far as uh, chapter representation with this plan six, if you think of our other reps, such as the Board of Election, Board of Education, and even our council delegate at the Tohajuli level, we don't receive any reports from them. So imagine this at the school board level, you're gonna get nothing from, let's say if I was from Theroux, I'm not gonna be uh, like, Baca Pruitt, Smith Lake, they're not going to be receiving reports. And I'm pretty sure they're not receiving reports right now. So how do we hold them accountable? How, will we, how would we use, how would um, we hold these uh, at-large positions accountable? I'm sure the answer is going to be vote for someone new in the new election. But if you really think about it, we're stuck with these representatives for two plus years, and in this case, four years. So to conclude, this is a matter. <clears throat> this is a matter of stripping Navajo citizens' rights and their voicing um, their voice at the local level. My recommendation would be go go work with work with the stakeholders and don't make it top heavy, which is what this really is. This plan is not a plan of the Navajo Nation um, citizens. It's a plan of the educational department. And I, I want to reiterate, this is not an educational issue. issue. It's an election issue. So, so, and it's pretty obvious that with the previous comments and questions that were asked, this, there's no clear rationale in creating this plan. So I just want to thank you for the comments and I hope um, there's more comments uh, coming and thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Atsuti. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment, a recommendation, or state a reason at this time? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Um, can you speak a little bit louder, ma'am? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Please state your name okay. for the record and you have five minutes. Okay. Uh, my name is Erlene Henderson. I'm from Pablo Pintado Community School. Uh, I'm a school board. I'm also uh, a parent and grandma. I would like to, I would like to say uh, a comment on this um, board approach apportionment plan. Uh, it uh, we discussed this about two two years ago or three years ago as a group within Eastern Agency. And we all went with plan four. We didn't go with plan six, it was plan four, which is um, the way it is right now. I know the other agency, the School board. He when the ag at the hands can be ah the hands can't do this what all need. Ago when it came to winter up, he said that the hands can't be done this They didn't listen to us. The local level of the east ah the. And here they just ah. Uh, we got all the information and recommendations from Dodi, Department of Education. So the artist, yeah, they used to be in the hot party, but I thought, eh, of course, for the local level, the Ethan, don't hit this, ah, the, of course, could all Mr. City in the end, Council Delegate, I thought, at 24, Elia. But then the council does it, though they need to put a chapter level there. There is a huge lack of communication. There is no report for the past two, three years. So they need to listen. Listen to us at the local level. They are what they are doing. The house are ah, of course. Speak up board a portion plan six. Hot niniki a doshas doshas a hot aida. Ah, yes, sir. Do be rasta dida. Of course, me trana rock report nil ido lefiki ye on the glad dolish. I don't know where well, it's going to be like a communication again. A consultation. I'm ah. AI opposed. Totally opposed. Plan six. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a comment, a recommendation, or state a reason at this time? Hello. Hello. Hello, I'd like to speak. Yes, um, please state your name for the record 
the organization that you're representing and you have five minutes, ma'am. My name is Sarah Jackson and I'm a school board member for um, Mariano Lake, Pinedale and Smith Lake. Um, I just want to say that I too oppose the plan six that you are wanting to put in place. My reason is, like the other lady said, there's no communication from your from your department, Doty. They don't come out and see what's going on at the schools. They they say that they're going to do this or they're going to do that, but we don't see them. And the other thing is, our council delegates don't even come to see a lot of our chapters. How is this plan six going to work if we have only one representative for about four or five schools? It's not going to work. So we need to stick to our our plan for and also these council delegates need to listen to the community. We're the voters. Our, com our community voted us in and we need that respect. And it's, it looks to me like you're violating our voting rights if you're doing if you're going to do this. So that's the reason why you guys are, we're taken out of court, whoever you are, we're taken out of court because you weren't ready. Your, your plans weren't ready. You didn't follow the 160 the day um, public hearing. All of that's going on. How is this gonna work? Even now, um, Dodie's in charge of Head Start and Head Start's going down. Um, their buildings are going down. Their bills are not paid on time. So I think we should just stick with plan six. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. I see a hand raise, uh, Moto G7. If you could please state your name for the record, and then you have five minutes. Yate, she Rick Padian, she got El Moto. Topa Han Slon, Chishabas's chain, Kiane does another. The school board election is going to be The other day, there was a comment Monday, and uh, the guy said, Think of your, your kids, not politics. To me, he's not thinking of our kids right now. The school board, you're cutting them. You're cutting representation from our kids' voice. You're cutting them at the knees. I wonder what's the motive behind this. I cannot, so the council delegates should have learned their lesson by now. They told us that we'll get more money to the people if we cut the council delegate down to 50, 25. It seems like the funding is still the same. The spending is still the same. They should learn their lesson by now. The, 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 the spending will still be the same, but our kids' representation will be chopped at the knees. We should be uh, asking ourselves, how can we improve the education system? Instead, we're going backwards. Should I throw comments? I don't know. I speak as in Shla. And this is really, really put my school at this over here uh, uh, behind. This pandemic showed us that our kids don't even meet the minimum requirement of, uh, of uh, education. That's what our concern should be instead of money. Do I call or comment this Okay, Allah. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment, recommendation, or state a reason at this time? Yes, I see a hand that's raised, Miss Kathleen Sosi. 
Please state your name and your organization, and then you have five minutes, ma'am. My name is Kathleen Sosi, and I represent Cove Day School and a member of the, the Bozba Executive Board. Um, during this um, uh, public hearing on this reapportionment, the public, and I was there, and so the other community members were there at the Shabrock chapter. There, uh, we were not aware of Plan 6, and Matthew So had brought that upon us at the last minute uh, with the election board. So the election board had nothing to do with that. That's what we were told. And so the majority of these public hearings, we have recordings and there's public records um, that we have in the Bozba and we had our own recorder. So we have all the evidence and I don't know where this um, plan six came about. And evidently it was Dodie's plan. So why is Dodi taking control of this instead of Hesse? Hesse is letting Dodi control them, the way I look at it. And then um, there's a young lady that was talking about how each representative are not going to be representing every school. And that is true because a lot of these new representatives will not know about the schools, about the communities, what their needs are. And then this is all about election. It's not about education, it's about election. So I don't know what Dodi is trying to do. And I, we strongly oppose that plan six. So we do have resolution from the chapter, from the school, the agency board, and then the community agency, and also the, the Neva Alcott School Board organization. We have all those resolutions opposing plan six. What more do they want? So, and it is not fair because all council delegates are just listening to plan six because all these other plans were there and plan, um, plan 4A, we were, the, that's the one that the public had chose. So I am totally opposed on plan six. Thank you for giving me this time. Thank you, Ms. Sosi. Is there anyone else who'd like to provide a comment, a recommendation, or state a reason at this time? Yes, I see a hand that's raised. Montoya, last name. Oh, yeah, hey. my name is Michelle hey. Montoya Chi. I um, am you have from... five minutes, Miss Montoya. Thank you. Share your name, Jean, that not sure. I'll touch on. Share your name, Jean, that not sure. Adi, a yah, um, Trat Nazmele, and Logic the Sida. I am the chapter president for Torian Starlight Chapter. I don't know that Nelgene Joe Old Hutch, our Torium Day School, Ajit Law School Board member in Schle. She a ya, Alkida, um, D. Bossadits Aya da Bonsis case, Dobin, I dish kid, Kashit Aw, D. Um, at the eat, Ato at the eat, Nilta, Ya da Kashit Aw, Aro Hut Aw, Bonso Kaida, D. Public hearing, O a ya, D. Quaggy, um, election bondi ka. Do quaggy a candidate candidates do quaggy a ya. This is how many you will pick. Don't you don't need auto a. Um, we did as we were instructed. Auto a yanda a ya do ilida. And you don't need and you vote. A quadi um, law is legal a ya. If you want to take back your vote a ya and ha hot it and you don't need. Kashit a ya not so. Sit a ya, Hajost it adotly. Taro Dick at Health and Education Human Services Committee. That's e at Hata Ots on Quaggy Representative Edo at the Schneider. Ah, yes, a beige boss on a D. Yin yet that is Nelligish on Holtz Ark at 
شوك اريا دلتي نخا نخا هزا اروش دانا هزت خا داولت صاش دي اجبت خاتنش اي او اي دو بجيش اي دا اشي ني او بجا هنا اتا دولي ريبرزنتيف دا نوثنيكي دي اني هيتا 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 نوثنيكي دي their leadership has been instilled in our community. And now I'm in the position that I'm in. In plain Navajo, why are you wanting to change this? I'm making that question to the committee and also because it, it is a recommendation of the Department of Diné Education. Thank you, Ms. Montoya. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment, a recommendation, or state a reason at this time, or Mr. So, would you like to say anything? Mr. Matthew So, would you like to say anything? Yeah, I, just, I also want to add for the record that one of the comments has come up is regard to Plan 4A. For those of who, um, the Plan 4A, which is apparently favored, favored by a lot of school boards, that was also developed by Department of Ten Education based on what's been submitted. So I just want to make that clear so you, you get, it, it appears that the Department of Ten Education has been unfairly bashed, but the plan that apparently a lot of school boards like was developed by the Department of Ten Education. Thank you, Mr. So. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment, recommendation, or state a comment at this time? Yes, I see a last name, Costello. Um, can you please state your name, the organization you represent, and you have five minutes? Yad e she Walinda Castillo in Shia. Toyon chapter dot e I guess I do. I'm a registered voter. Dequa plan six at Ninigi. A um, I don't approve it for our, my community where I'm registered. Some of my relatives, do you understand what you voted for back in the election that took place in 2020? Because it states Eastern Navajo School, vote for two. Eastern Navajo, no. In our region, in Crown Point Agency, it means for the whole agency, the communities it represents. Quit ayan sitak case, the elderly, our relatives, Thank you, Mr. Matthew. So, is there anyone else who would like to make a comment, recommendation, or state a comment at this time? She, yeah, I'm a school administrator. Akodida, if we combine schools, are a Toyon Day School, not Nijindo, Otto Horfano, Otto Zitna Dili, 
They're all separate communities. It's a distance. Our, our, our local community. Every school has their own separate budget. Jacques School Administrator and Schlitzschnia. Personal policies and procedures, and every school is different. So, Kwebon Sita case, did a board meeting. No, it takes, it doesn't take one hour. Each community is different. It's based on the student needs, it's based on the parent needs. School board members are elected. They represent the community. So if we reduce the number of community members, auto, like in Toyon Agency, or Eastern Navajo, Bakao, Ana, Kihe, then DZ, Nana, it's not a true representative for our kids in the community. I had, I had nieces and nephews that went to school there at Nanejinja. This is not going to work for our community member. And as a school administrator, I oppose Plan 6. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Castello. Castello. Is there anyone else who'd like to provide a recommendation, state a reason or a comment at this time? Is there anyone else who would like to provide a reason, state a comment or a recommendation at this time? If you are not commenting, please mute your phones. Is there anyone who would like to state a reason or comment or a recommendation at this time? Hello, good afternoon. My name is Pauline Abeda. Hello, Ms. Abeda. You have five minutes. Please state your name for the record and the organization that you represent. Thank you. My name is Paulina Beta, and I am a voter for the Tojale community. I'm also a parent of two elementary age children who attend the local community school, Tojale Community School. And I'm the current vice president of our Tojale Community School Board. Thank you. The comment I'd like to make um, are actually around several points. Um, I think one of the first ones I'd like to address, though, is Mr. Slater's comment and Doty's um, stance on this issue that their primary purpose and reason for this um, is to address nepotism, favoritism, and those type of issues that have been happening at the local school board level. My comment is that, yes, I agree that that does happen on some school boards. It happens in a lot of communities and it happens in a lot of organizations. And I can say that at one time it did happen at Tordula Community School. We were controlled by three different families who ran that school for a number of years. 
But most recently in the 2016 election, when a new um, three board members had joined two previous board members, that shifted, the, the dynamic changed. There was more accountability. There were more questions asked. There was more um, bringing to the surface of these issues and addressing these issues. And I can say that it was not a quick process. It did take time and we were able to shift that. Today, our school board, our school is operating in a very positive manner. We can say with certainty that all of our employees have been hired ethically, have background checks, have met full credentials. Our audits are favorable. We are one of the lowest spending boards, although we are over 100 miles away from Wonder Rock where we would conduct a lot of business. And I think that it all depends on the type of board that you have in there. And our board is very active with the Bozba and other school board associations. We challenge ourselves to have ethical practices and follow the policies and procedures and abide by the law. And I think that other boards have that potential too. So for first, I'd like to address those nepotism comments and say, yes, they happen, they're everywhere, but our school is, is an example of that change and that shift that can happen. Um, secondly, I'd like to make a comment that I think by reducing the number of school boards, um, you really take away the voice from the community. And I think in some of the other arguments that were made were some schools did not have any people running for office um, I believe that um, DOTI, other organizations, Navajo Nation Board of Education can do outreach to colleges through ONSFA. They can recruit current college students to run for these board positions, to bring new ideas, to give life to their community schools. Because we, as the younger generation and who are in school or recently out of school, know the challenges. We know how we should best prepare our youth for college, for higher education or trade programs, or even the military. I believe that um, there, an outreach needs to be done to have a diverse group of people serving on these boards. I do not believe that reducing them is the best solution. I'd like to keep the community, local community voice there. Um, I do understand that there was also a comment made about the satellite communities keeping their five member boards. And although that's favorable for me and my community, I'd like to um, say that I advocate that all communities should stay the way they were before this happened and have their full representation. Um, I do not think that Tuojale is in a position to speak for Alamo or Alamo is in a position to speak for Rama, or we're in a position to speak for any other community. Um, I will say that as a parent, I enjoy that I can go down to my local school, talk with our parent advisory committee who's very active advocate for um, things for my child's classroom or opportunities that they have, and then also um, address concerns with my local CSA and our board. Ms. Beta? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you so much for your comment. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to provide a comment, state a reason or recommendation at this time? Is there anyone who would like to provide a comment, a reason, or a recommendation at this time? Is there anyone who would like to provide a reason, 
state a comment or recommendation at this time. If there are no more comments or recommendations or reasons, we'll go ahead and move on down to close of the public hearing. Mr. S Matthew So, do you have anything that you wanna say at this time? Um, no, no, we don't at this moment. Um, just, to, just to be clear that there is a, a comment, a, a a place where you can send comment, and that's the Health Education Human Services Committee, Attention School Board Apportionment. Uh, the mailing address is PO Box 670, Winder Rock, Arizona, 86515-0670. And there's also a number where you can fax your comment to or written statements, and that's the 928-871-7474. There's also a specific email address that has been created to ensure that all your comments go to a, a specific location and not not put in with all the other uh, comment places. And the address is schoolboard at navajo-innocent.gov. The address again is schoolboard at navajo-innocent.gov. Thank you, Mr. So. In addition, we will continue having both in-person meetings and Zoom meetings tomorrow. August 27, 2021. The in-person meeting is gonna be held at Fort Defiance chapter from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock. And then we will have the Zoom meeting from one o'clock to three o'clock. Thank you so much for attending. I appreciate your participation and your attendance in this virtual public hearing.